Saga Podcast. And welcome back to another episode of the Space Arena, Ground Arena Saga Podcast, where we talk about Star Wars Unlimited from the ground and up into space. I am Mr. Ben, and today I'm by myself, but we had so many new cards to get to that we didn't want to miss an opportunity to talk about some of these. So let's go ahead and dive right into what we're looking at today. All right, to start, we have Admiral... Akbar, it's a three cost command unit. He's a one four with restore one and when played, you may deal damage to a unit equal to the number of units you control in its arena. That feels like a lot of setup. How many units are you reasonably going to be controlling in that arena on turn three when this guy comes down? If you're not playing him on turn three and you're waiting until you're going to drop him later in the game i guess that does sort of feed into the strategy of maybe you under drop and then get this guy out to get a little bit more value out of him but you're looking at a minimum of one free damage maybe two maybe three on a one four body that can restore i'm a little bit lukewarm on this guy it remains to be seen how viable a a swarm a flood the board strategy really is going to be in the game it could be good and if it is well maybe this guy is a little bit of a sticky body at four defense and gives you a little bit of healing maybe there's some value there but overall i'm not terribly impressed with uh akbar one might say it's a trap uh okay next up we have an eight cost space unit this is command affiliated heroism affiliated seven seven restore two each other friendly unit gains restore one and when played play a heroism unit from your discard pile it costs three less so that's doing a lot um this is going to depend so this is a top end unit that actually does something which is a critique that i always offer anytime we have big expensive cards the thing that I say over and over again is big expensive cards have to do something as soon as they come into play because it's so late in the game, they can't be passive. The restore two on this card is not to me that big of a deal because you may not even be able to attack with this unit. It might get removed from the board before you can do anything with it. Your opponent's going to have access to all kinds of removal when we're talking about eight resource turns. So the restore two, maybe that doesn't matter. The stats, I mean, they're fine, I guess, if you get to swing with it, but giving each other friendly unit restore one. Now that could be swinging. Now this feeds into how good is the flood the board strategy going to be? We touched on this with Admiral Akbar, And if it's reasonable to put a lot of units into play and have a bunch of ready, prepared to attack stuff, you drop this as your first move. And then every other attack you get for the whole rest of the turn, you get a little bit of healing. That feels pretty decent. And on top of that, it lets you play a unit out of your discard pile. So it essentially adds a card to your hand when it comes into play. Now, is that going to be good enough? Is a 7-7 seven, seven body plus a 3-cost body that you can't do anything with this turn, is that going to be good enough for this to be the top end of your deck? I don't know. Uh, I think it's really going to, kind of like Admiral Akbar, it's going to live and die on the back of, does this thing fit into a strategy that's actually going to be viable. Put another way, is flooding the board going to be something you can actually do and make it work in this game? If you can, these could be cards that actually fit into that strategy. But if you can't, if the action economy makes board flood not as powerful, if uh, having smaller units, the inefficiency of that just bogs you down and you're, I mean, a top end for a deck that struggles to work, probably doesn't see that much play. So I'm a little bit, I'm not convinced that playing lots of undercosted units is going to be the way you're going to win games consistently. And if that's your strategy, having a card that plays into that, that costs eight, are you even playing resources up to eight? I, I don't know. There's a lot of questions that I don't have answers to, but both of these cards, I could see them being good in the right deck, but I'm not convinced that the right deck is going to exist. Moving on to Resilient, this is a one cost vigilance upgrade. It gives a unit plus three defense. Uh, fine, like this is a, a sealed 
this is a draft kind of like filler card uh, to take what you're given and make it just a little bit better. I don't think this card probably sees that much play in sealed or, or I'm sorry, in constructed. Uh, that could potentially change if there is some kind of a build that has upgrade synergy, like you need lots of cheap upgrades to affect a level up condition or trigger something on a leader. In that case, maybe this sees some play because it's a cheap upgrade, but overall it's fine, but it's not something I'm terribly excited about. Okay, so next up we have Energy Conversion Lab. This is a command affiliated 25 health base. So it has an epic action on it and it lets you play a unit that costs six or less from hand and it gives it ambush for the phase. So this basically lets you pick a unit that doesn't have the word ambush printed on it and give it to that unit for the phase. Uh, again, ambush lets you ready a unit, but then you can only do that if there is a targetable unit for it to attack. You can't go face with ambush. So it's like rush, not charge. Uh, I like that better than some of the other 25 health bases we've seen, you know, give a, a unit the ability to have haste, circumvent summoning sickness and actually like crash into something right away. Uh, sure. Sure. Is it worth five health? Uh, Maybe? I, I definitely like this better than some of the other ones we've seen. Okay, two cost, ground unit, command affiliated, Admiral Piet. He is a 1-4. Each friendly non-leader unit that costs six or more gains ambush. After So after you play that unit, you can ready it and attack a unit. Uh, yeah. So you're never going to play this guy on turn two. You're only going to play this guy late in the game and it's going to give your big bomb cards like maybe the home one the ability to go the turn they come into play so that's great synergy like cards like this existing make cards like home one playable so sure okay yeah like it, again this hypothetical flood the board command deck that has like a some top end cards. Now, obviously the less expensive cards you play in your Admiral Piet deck, the less value you're going to get out of Admiral Piet. But yeah, yeah, I could see this being a deck that mostly runs small cost things with a few bombs and then oops, surprise, my bombs get a, get a go ahead and swing this turn. Okay. Maybe that's playable. Sure. Uh, one cost event called Recruit. This is command affiliated. Search the top five cards of your deck for a unit, reveal it, and draw it. Put the other cards on the bottom in a random order. I wish you could choose the order that you put the cards on the deck, but on the bottom of the deck, but whatever. Uh, so you pay one to get a choice of the top five cards of your deck. I assume we all put good cards in our deck, so that's going to be hopefully something good to choose from there. Oh man. So that takes a slot in your deck and it costs one to play to turn it into something else. Uh, that's probably playable in a faction like Command that's going to be wanting to do things like ramp. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities where faction is going to highly value the like card selection, the ability to make sure they're holding the right stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I like this card in general, but within this faction, I think it kind of makes sense. And it's probably, play yeah, I mean, I think you're going to play this in sealed. Like, man, I'm holding a bunch of garbage. Let's look at the top five cards in my deck. Hopefully something, something good is there. Yeah. I mean, in its worst case, this card basically says pay one pick one of your other cards, like pick one of your combo cards. Yeah, I, I think out of everything we've looked at so far today, I think the thing I'm most like on board with is this recruit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Two cost ground unit, Colonel Yularen. He is a command affiliated two, three. When you play a command unit, including this one, heal one damage from your base. So this does surprise me a little bit. I wasn't expecting command to have this much access to healing, but as we learn more about the as we see more cards we learn more about the class identity for each class and clearly command is going to have kind of a sub theme of of healing within it uh two cost two three that has potential upside i mean two cost two three you're getting what you paid for that's totally fine and with the potential upside that feels pretty good uh okay three costs i feel like we've already talked about this guy three cost three three vigilance affiliated death trooper when played, deal two damage to a friendly ground unit and two damage to an enemy ground unit. 
Uh, yeah, that's pretty decent. Uh, Vigilance doesn't have a lot of like pingy direct damage stuff, so this might be one of the the better versions of the access to that type of effect that we see in this faction. Three cost three three is not like amazing stats, but it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, this is a playable card. All right, Agent Callus. I like this guy. He's a five cost command affiliated ground unit. He's a four four with ambush, and when another unique unit is defeated you may draw a card, use this ability only once each round. So unique is the little star thing next to the name. Uh, how much mileage are you actually going to get out of this ability? I, I think you have to ask yourself, is a five cost four, four worth it by itself? Or can I make it so that he hits the board on a turn where I know I'm going to be able to hit like my opponent's leader or like you can have a setup to guarantee that a unique character is going to go down to try to get that extra card that feels like a lot of work so i think you have to look at the unique unit defeat thing as being some gravy and you got to ask yourself is a five cost four four with ambush worth playing uh those stats feel a little low to me uh, i mean maybe that's the ambush tax maybe Cards that have the word ambush printed on them are always going to have stats that are a little bit low for the cost. That could be the case. And once we we see the full scope of what all the card pool looks like, it may turn out that actually a five cost four four with ambush isn't that bad at all. Uh, but at this point, I'm not sure. Uh, next up, we have the hard point heavy blaster. This is a two cost upgrade, command affiliated. It gives plus two, plus two, but it has to be attached to a vehicle and the attached unit gains on attack. If this unit isn't attacking a base, you may deal two damage to a unit in the defender's arena. Uh, good effect. Good, good, it, really, I like everything about this. A two cost for two, two stats put on the board is all pretty good. It does have the restriction that it has to go onto a vehicle. Uh, that's not the end of the world. Uh, most decks I think are probably going to have some vehicles. And if you're going to run this upgrade, obviously you're going to have vehicles in your deck. Otherwise that would be a little bit silly. Uh, so satisfying that requirement, I think is going to be pretty easy. And once it's on there, in addition to getting the two plus two plus two on the stats, which is totally reasonable for paying two, you also get the ability to potentially throw two ping damage around the board whenever you declare attacks. All that seems good. And again, this would fit very well into a swarmy flood the board type strategy, uh, which we've touched on several times throughout today's card reveals. So next up we have Sabine Wren. Man, I'm excited about this leader. Uh, so on her undeployed side, she is a deal one da action, so exhaust her and deal one damage to each base. So a little bit of self hurting to do a little bit of damage, I like everything about that. It feels perfect, like flavor for an aggressive card. It feels good for the character. I like it all. Once you deploy her, which you can do as early as turn four, which feels very early. A lot of leaders are coming out turn six, turn seven. She's coming out turn four. Now her stats are two five, so that is a little smaller than we've seen on some other leaders, but she comes out on turn four with that two five and her on attack is deal one damage to each enemy base. So a little bit of future proofing there that makes sure that it still does stuff in multiplayer, but even in 1v1, you're going to be able to take her, her undeployed ability and just take the sting off it. I'm gonna take the edge off this ability and continue to hit your base while I do stuff. Uh, I love everything about this card. I love everything about the, the character, the theme, what it does. If you wanna play aggro, this is the kind of card you wanna play. Like that's just all there is to it. Uh, finally, we have Sabine Wren, Ground unit, aggression affiliated. She's a two cost, two, three. While there are at least three aspects among other friendly units, this unit can't be attacked unless she gains Sentinel. On attack, you may deal one damage to the defender or the base. So she could be a two cost, three, three, or a two cost, ping the base, two, three. The having three aspects among your other friendly units, ah. Uh, to me, that feels like gravy. I don't think that's why you put this card in your deck. I don't think that's why you play with her, but it's certainly going to happen because you're probably going to have an aspect on your leader, an aspect on your base, and then either heroism or villainy. So getting three aspects into play probably isn't that hard to do. 
making her a little bit stickier. So she's a little bit overstated. If you think about the on attack ability, making her into a two cost three, three, that feels pretty good. And she has the ability to stick around a little bit longer than maybe she reasonably a, th a three defense unit could be expected to do. So everything about this feels really strong, a good aggressive unit that maybe can pretend it has more hit points than it actually does. Feels great to me. Next up, we have four cost vigilance affiliated Kanan Jarrus. This is a ground unit. He is a four five and on attack, you may discard one card from the defending player's deck for each friendly specter unit. Heal one damage from your base for each different aspect among the discarded cards. So there's a lot going on there. Uh, <laughs> feels a little bit needlessly complicated to me, but if you build towards Spectre, so if you're playing with the Star Wars Rebels characters, you put those guys out, you get them into play, and then you play Kanan, you really get to nuke the opponent's deck. You know, how many Spectres are there going to be? I assume probably the whole crew, so we could be looking, if you can really stick some stuff to the board, you know, five or six characters, maybe in Rainbow Unicorn Land. How big is this going to be most of the time? Probably a couple. You're probably going to mill a couple cards and maybe heal one, maybe heal two, potentially three. Three is probably going to be like the high for the healing, even if you discard more cards than that, because most players probably aren't going to be running that many aspects in their deck. I mean, there's probably going to be two aspects and then you might hit a heroism and a villainy. So I guess four is reasonable without assuming your opponent is paying uh, aspect penalties all over the place. But I'm thinking three is probably going to be where it peaks out most of the time, M maybe even averaging like two. Uh, but four cost four or five feels okay stat wise. You're you're taking some threats out of your opponent's deck. You're maybe getting some healing off of that. I, I really like everything about this card. So overall, I, I continue to be impressed with how FFG is able to get the flavor of these characters and kind of get them into the card in a way that not only represents the character but also reps the character represents the character within that specific aspect because each aspect kind of has its own identity and uh, that is a topic that we're going to tackle here on the show soon and break down what the identity is of each different aspect so till next time we'll see you in the arenas <laughs>